Hello, uh, today is uh, February 24, 2015. This is episode 22 of Daniel Weekly. This is Tuesday. Tomorrow is uh, curl, curl release day, so uh, 7.41.0 will be released tomorrow. I figured I'd save uh, the news f- uh, for this release until next week, but there aren't that many m- major things that have happened f- for curl this um, this round, this eight week period. So there, there's not a lot of news, there's a lot of bug fixes and I have a lot of more bug bugs uh, in bug tracker and pending fixes I, I'm working on several things myself. <clears throat> so, uh, I, I, I mentioned last week that I wanted to tell you a little bit about, about VTLS, the little project to attempting to split out the um, virtual uh, API within libcurl that separates, um, that is actually an internal API uh, to, to deal with the underlying actual TLS libraries so that the code inside libcurl can basically ignore which library it, it, it uses and uh, just use this internal API instead. And we're working on this VTLS project to possibly make a separate project out of it so that other projects can reuse the same kind of effort and, and uh, spirit and ideas. So we've been working on this for a couple of weeks or we've been debating and, and struggled back and forth how to do it, how the API should work and, and so on, what kind of some basics in the project really. I wouldn't say that we have gotten very, very far. VTLS within libcurl is still not uh, separated out uh, extremely good. So it's still kind of tangled with a lot of libcurl stuff so it has to be ripped out better which makes it harder to make libcurl use it smoothly we have to make some binding layer or glue layer to make sure that however we ten, uh, end up use uh, however we end up making vtls i mean the api for the new library we still need to make some adjustments within libcurl to use the new one and i would say that um, a bunch of the other uh, guys and, and um, team members in the VTLS project, they're from the WGET project. And uh, uh, we're not entirely on the same um, level all the time on how to do things, how the API, sh- API should work and, and uh, things like that. So I'm not sure where we're, where that is going to land. I'm going to push forward on that um, a, a while longer to see where we can end up. But at the same time, we're continuing uh, to get fixes and, and polish the libcurl code. So of course, everything in libcurl stays in libcurl, uh, and we're gonna work on that and improve it and polish it as long as we need to. And if VTLS, the separate project that might get another name by the time it actually becomes a real project, uh, once that's kind of get somewhere and, and starts to become something that I believe in, then I could start uh, adjusting libcurl to actually use that. And then I would probably st- make uh, adjustment to use that as an alternative to the internal one uh, to start with so that we can get our feet wet before we actually take a jump. So I would imagine that for libcurl, um, that is still um, at some point in a fairly distant future. I mean, not short term, at least. We'll see. Maybe things will end up differently. I'm open, uh, but um, I'm also kind of experienced with these kind of of efforts from the past, that it's not that easy. I wanted to mention that we uh, saw that HTTP HTTP 2, the draft number 17, was approved by the steering group within the ITF, the, the IESG. And the, so the 17 is the, going to be the how the RFC will end up. Well, it's going to go through the RFC editor, so it might get some some minor cleanings, but that's that's the protocol, that's the format, that's how it works, and that is now kind of written in stone. That is going to be an RFC. There there isn't any RFC number yet, and the corresponding H pack um, has also been approved, and that's also going to be. Uh, that's also passed on to the editors and and going to be an RFC soon. Um, And and, uh, because of that, because of that um, approval status, I also updated my HTTP2 explain document and put it up and tweeted about it. 
and it hit uh, uh, Hacker News again, which is awesome. And I'm now counting on more than 65,000 downloads of this document from, from people. And of course, I'm aware that a lot of the, a lot of readers have downloaded multiple copies because I've upgraded over time. So those aren't 65,000 unique readers, but still, and I would say that uh, I'm kind of amazed still by, by that number. Cool. Um, I, I got this. I have the, my friend Peter in Belgium. He sent me this. A lot of curl stickers of all sorts of different uh, layouts and kinds. Look. Uh, I think it's roughly a bazillion of them. So it kind of, yeah, I'm not sure what to do with all these, but I'm going to hand them out to people and, and friends at some point in time when I meet people. So anyway, I have one on my laptop now. I'm happy. So I'm going to put that sticker race on hold for a while, I think, since now I have um, this huge pile of stickers to <laughs> take care of and hand out anyway. Um, I'm going to really make an effort again. To, to make an Libus SH2 release. We also have a security thing about um, a code in Libus SH2, so that's one reason I want to get a release out. I want to handle the, the security thing properly and then get a release out and make the security advisory about the security problem and, and stuff like that. And also it's been ages since we did a, since we did a Libus SH2 release the last time, so it's really about time. Um, I, I I have this pen. I'm back again. You know this uh, Firefox bug that I've been working with all the time that checks for premature cutoffs um, and and uh, basically makes an error from that in Firefox. And now I my my patch now I I ended up detecting that I can. I can properly detect a premature cut of gzip stream because when, when when downloading gzip content it actually has a kind of a footer in in the gzip stream so it's so when zlib or zlib lib, libz whatever that library that we're using internally in in uh, firefox it actually knows when it has has reached the end of a gzip stream but it doesn't know that if we've reached the end of a deflate stream which is roughly the same but deflate very often doesn't come with the proper header and footer in the stream so we can't really tell if we've gone to the end of the stream or not so right now my patch is detecting gzip and it warns or returns error on, on cut off gzip but not cut off deflate so we'll see i'm going to try to land that again the 237623 bug and we'll see I also added a couple of test cases now for, for the test suite to just make extra sure that it does what I think it should do and it seems to be okay. I posted a blog post yesterday about um, that bug finding is slow in spite of many eyeballs. You know this old Linus law that says that um, uh, it says that um, Given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow, which it depends on what you mean with eyeballs and bugs and shallow and everything. But clearly, I'm, I, I went through all the security-related bugs in, in curl that we've had through the time, through 16 years. We have 30 bug reports on that, or security vulnerabilities. And I decided to, to just look at those 30, which isn't a, a large amount to base any statistics on. So sure, a large um, caveat there. But um, I went through that since we have a lot of data on it. I have dates and the specific specifics when we added a bug, when we fixed it, when we got it reported, when we told the world about it and so on. So I could actually just in detail analyze these 30 bugs and see how long did each bug stay in the code until they were fixed. And, and so on. And on average, it turns out that we had these security related problems in 2,100 days each on average. I mean, the, the worst 
offender, I think, was 5,600 days or something like that in the code. So clearly, I mean, this at the time when we, uh, when I say that we have like, a, what, a billion users or, or whatever, and we have, it's been downloaded at a massive rate. So, and we have uh, thousands of people on the mailing list and so on. So there's a lot of eyeballs, potential eyeballs out there, but clearly those potential eyeballs are not really finding bugs just because they are eyeballs. So I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just analyzing. I'm just uh, noticing and observing these effects. So just because we're, we're getting more users and more developers, it doesn't really mean that we find more security related problems. I would say, I mean, earlier there's still, there's, we still find them. And we, I would say we find them even more these days. But the ones we find, they've been around for a very long time. So, I mean, likely, or the, the, by all means, we have a lot, several uh, more security-related problems in the code. I mean, we've found 30 so far. And looking back through 2014, we had 10 reported problems. So, I mean, uh, by the odds say that, yeah, we have more bugs security related bugs in there. And of course we have bugs in, in general. I mean, we're gonna release a, a release tomorrow with I think over 60 bug fixes. So that's it, a lot of, lot of that. I'm gonna, I'm also working on another blog, blog post about uh, TLS in HTTP2, since I think we get so much questions and confusion about what exactly does HTTP2 and TLS say about each other. I mean, um, this, the, the browsers, Firefox and Chrome, they will only do HTTP2 over TLS and, and so on. And actually Internet Explorer has only has also only showed uh, HTTP2 over TLS. So, and, and at the same time, the spec doesn't say that you have to use TLS. So, and there's a lot of, um, I think, confusions and misunderstandings and, and a, a bit of a, a mess sometimes. I figured I would, I would try to clarify that. So if you have any questions about TLS in HTTP2, those kind of together, uh, please uh, let me know and I'll try to include that. I'll, I'll make a post, I think, um, next week or so. I'm gonna, this is, um, I'm going skiing at the end of this week, so I'm, I'm gonna be a little bit less active. Gonna do the release tomorrow and then go skiing for the rest of the week, basically. Just not do a lot of hacking at all. That's about it for this week. I'm still working on the Navigator Online thing slightly in, in Firefox. Um, I haven't done so much about it, but I know Valentin, my, my teammate in Firefox, is, he has a, a lovely patch uh, that seems to be a good start for, for future work. So I'm going to try that out and see, see where we're going. Um, link here. Um, that's it for this week. Next week, I'll tell you about this curl release that I'll do tomorrow. I'll hopefully get the TLS blog post out. And I have another f blog post about smileys in URLs that I'll try to get out so we can have some fun discussions about that too. And um, yeah, that's about it. Hopefully, all projects I'm involved with move on a lot by the next week. So we'll have a lot more. And I uh, count on your participation and uh, fun and questions and bug reports and bug fixes and a lot of code. Until the see you next week.